Good afternoon and welcome once again to the group exhibit Hanover uh, group exhibit, exhibit hydrogen and fuel cells at Hanover Fair 2012. Our next topic is a uh, uh, state and perspective. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong side. Cowrie's kilowatt class natural gas fuel processor. With me today, I have the director of Cowrie Heat Treatment, David Lim. Please join me uh, welcoming welcoming him on stage. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. So you have an interesting name and an interesting, <laughs> uh, interesting product. Yes. Uh, let's start on the name first. Sure. Um, where do you come from? Me. Oh, gee, this is a. Well, actually, uh, uh, some Canadian background. Yeah, <laughs> like like you. I uh, meant your company, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, my company is from Taiwan. Uh, we are. A 40 years old company, and then we have some. Um, actually, our company has some German DNA. Okay. Yeah, we we started with uh, our earliest product is uh, metal heat treatment, and actually we, our chairman learned most of the technology when he was young and started a company. Actually, he studied in Germany. Okay. Yeah, so coming here, probably kind of like coming back to the roots, so to speak. Yeah. So you mentioned your your main competency is in uh, metal processing, metallurgy. Right, right. Uh, what what type of products did you start in? Um, well, actually, we do uh, a variety of metal treatment, and the most important thing, heat treatment. And uh, we started with this kind of uh, a core competence about 40 years ago, and then uh, uh, we make metal type of products, metal treatment, metal works uh, for. Until now, we were still doing this. Until like uh, about 15 years ago, we started to have a um, plate heat exchanger type product. So basically, it's uh, uh, converting our core competence and with our uh, capabilities, transferring into the, a different product, which is using the same com com uh, same competence uh, uh, to new, make a new product for new market about 15 years ago. So uh, and then until we come into the 21st century. So we are still having this core competence of metal treatments, metal works, and so forth. Uh, and we thought that um, we should you know, be in a different stage in terms of our corporate uh, growth. So uh, we went from, uh, started with the metal treatment, which is an energy intensive kind of product. Then we make uh, uh, heat exchangers, brace plate heat exchanger. The idea of a brace plate heat exchange is being is used industrially to basically thermal management. And the short uh, answer to that, short in short, it is for energy savings. So in the 21st century, our vision is that the next thing we should do is probably in energy production. So uh, we are we see the future of energy is in fuel cell. So that's why we pick the topic, and then we are using uh, our core competence of uh, metalworks uh, transferring ag again in the 21st century in terms of uh, a product which is fuel processor which has a lot of metal parts which is what we are good at and also a lot of thermal uh, management which is also what we are good at so we, that's why we want to contribute in this marketplace so you started uh, in the energy markets with the heat exchanger right and and now you're getting in, into processing itself right. so you have a natural gas fuel processor uh, right. so what is a natural gas fuel processor? So a natural gas fuel processor, well, the way in short is they get natural gas into a, a black box or a metal, metal black box. Then you get hydrogen out of it in real short term. But uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, engineering, a lot of uh, chemistry going on for what's the use of hydrogen. And what our idea is that, or actually our, what we see is that um, for a fuel cell to operate and to generate electricity, you need hydrogen. But we don't have a hydrogen infrastructure in most part of the world, I should say. Uh, Germany probably is coming up pretty soon, I hope. And then in Japan, maybe. But the rest of the part of the world, we don't see much of a hydrogen infrastructure. So what we, do, what we believe is that you need to have a product that bridge the gap between the uh, petrochemical-based product or hydrocarbon-based product and hydrogen. And we see the place of a fuel processor. So natural gas has very good infrastructure in most part of the world. So we think that natural, that's why we picked the fuel as natural gas, 
and pick the product as a fuel processor, and the, ultimately the product is uh, uh, fuel cell and then uh, electricity users. So I understand the advantages of, of using the existing uh, natural gas infrastructure so to get widespread acceptance quickly. Sure. But a problem with natural gas that makes me a little comfortable is is when you burn it, you, you still, even if you use it to produce hydrogen, you you still create carbon dioxide yes. and it's kind of dirty hydrogen. And it, I mean, there's there's we the reason we have a natural gas infrastructure is because we're burning it currently. So mm -hmm. why would you bother to first convert it to hydrogen and then put it through a fuel cell at all? Well, I uh, heard that argument many times. Uh, the way uh, I would say is that, I mean, you have to I mean, even if you with electrolysis, you still use the grid. And the grid, most countries, you are still using coal-fired power, uh, coal fire power plant. So you still, <laughs> you still have the carbon footprint. You can't get rid of it. Unless you use nuclear. Well, you can get rid of it. Y yes, it's a matter of time, right? <laughs> but if you, unless you use nuclear. And uh, we got pretty much freaked out in the past year, right? Uh, with nuclear. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're working on other options. <laughs> That's right. So um, natural gas is quite abundant, and recently we also heard there's like a, a great amount of reserve you can find you can find in U.S. Yes, natural gas you still have carbon emission, but compared with uh, internal combustion engine use, we can bring down the carbon footprint by 40 percent, and this is proven in the case in uh, in Japan, where they have over 10,000 units deployed uh, being used every day. And we expect the growth in Japan, as far as, uh, as, far as I know, be probably another 50%, maybe even an order of fact, uh, a factor of one or two uh, increase next year. So uh, we can't have the solution right away. But we think that a fuel processor is an intermediate solution. And this intermediate solution meaning maybe uh, five, 10 years at least uh, to bridge the gap from a carbon, strongly carbon-based uh, energy production to a totally clean. But that's the, and we see our place is the immediate. So if you're going to have to accept natural gas as mm -hmm. a, and, and having a carbon footprint as a necessary right. evil, at least you can reduce it by, exactly. by 40%. Yes, yes. So. And if, if we improve technology, as we always said, we can bring it down further. So where does that 40% come from in comparison to tra traditional, um, traditional ways of, of burning natural gas? Well, um, as you know, um, the internal combustion engine generally has about uh, 20, 20 plus percent high efficiency. For um, a, a fuel cell system with, uh, based on natural gas, and then plus uh, com uh, micro CHP combined uh, heat and power, you can bring the efficiency up to about like 80, 80 plus percent. So from the efficiency point of view, actually can significantly bring down the, just because of the calculation, bring down the carbon footprint. So, so much of your gains are actually in heat recovery? Heat re partly heart heat recovery, partly is improved in the electrical efficiency. How does uh, your system compare to a traditional, uh, like a f in terms of footprint, a traditional system? Uh, you mean like physical footprint? Yeah, how would it look installed in a house? I would say it's comparable, comparable, yeah. Okay. And you were saying that you already have uh, thousands of these, of your, of your system? No, not, not no? my system, not actually. Your, but heat exchangers or, oh, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, sorry, fuel processors in, in Japan already. Oh, actually, it's, it's um, our colleague in Japan, not yeah. us. Uh, and they are doing a great job in terms of breaking the market and being a pioneer. They have, uh, this is, Correct me, uh, anyone can correct me. I believe there are at least 10,000 units running in Japan, and I believe they, they, they are expecting a growth of at least 50 to 100% in 2013. That's, what I, uh, that's the number I got from Japan. And you're hoping to join them? Uh, if not, you know, be their partner, going to other areas, in, at least in Asia, that's what we think. And as far as we know, uh, based on our, all the customers that we talk to, there is a demand in terms of a uh, fuel processor. They like fuel cell. There is, I don't know where I can see it's a green, green movement in Asia. And I basically uh, saw it influenced by what happened here in Germany, in Japan. Those are good things. And then I think in Southeast Asia, we are also catching up and uh, we are expecting a huge growth in Asia.
So do you see your main market to remain in Asia, or do you want to enter in Europe and maybe North America, other countries? Our primary market is still Southeast Asia, Asia Southeast Asia, because that's our neighborhood. And we are actually open to uh, having uh, partners and customers in Europe as well. Uh, I know I'm Canadian, kind of don't want to badmouth that part of the world, but a lot of the things there is a still a little bit slow. Although, I mean, the, the major you know, uh, fuel cell producer ballot is still Canadian. Um, but uh, so we are not ruling out the North American market. Uh, it's just a priority, priority. Uh, go for what you know, yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, you have a, a, a potential uh, partnerships or, or competitors in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, what stage at development are, are you at? Uh, are you yet commercial with this product? We are at the pre-commercial stage in terms of our product. Uh, we can, if there are partners we're interested, we can catch up with them at their pace as fast as we can. I mean, we are a Taiwanese company. Uh, we are not super huge. We are big enough. Uh, we have commitment. Uh, and we have the, all the Taiwanese capabilities, you know, it's like, um, you know, if you have Taiwanese capabilities, you have things like this, oh, yeah, you have to have things like this, or HTC, HTC or things like that. So um, we can catch up with our partners if they want us to be in light speed, we can do that. So if you can make an iPhone, you can make a, make a fuel processor, is that it? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> Okay, um, so, so how do you plan to enter the market? Will you start with demo systems? Yes, so our, our strategy is as follows. Uh, we started with uh, uh, demonstrations, field testing for about like, uh, with our customers or partners for six to nine months. Then we want to make sure that our partners and customers are happy with, uh, uh, with the product. Uh, for being working with full products over 10 years and our team actually has the uh, combined experience of over 10, 20 years, we um, we know that a fuel processor is not cannot be is integration of a fuel processor and fuel cell is quite challenging. It, it still take a while to plug and play. That's what we all want. But the fact is that it takes. Uh, we are not there yet. Very few, very few product are there. Very, very few. We know we know who they are. But uh, we want to face the reality, and then we. we very good at working with our customer or partners. And during that three or six months times, we want to work very closely with our partners, customers, and want to make them happy. We are happy and everyone is happy. That's what we want to do. So if you're looking for partners, why should a partner choose you? Well, uh, I think that we have the technical capabilities. We know fuel processor at the back of our hand, our own, of course. And we have very good, uh, we understand fuel cell system very well as well. Um, our, our team has a, a, very, a lot, very knowledgeable in terms of fuel cell system. They have been working with fuel cell system over well, 10, around 10 years or so. So uh, they have worked with several types of fuel cell systems. So um, I think that I'm quite confident with my team and I think that they can uh, provide a lot of added values to our customers and partners. And uh, speaking to your experience in manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, I understand you're, you're ISO certified sure. and, and you're used to working with uh, CE marks and, and UL certification. Sure. And uh, you're also quite innovative in, in your, your products as well. How, how many uh, patents do you hold in these? We, as far as I know, we have over 10, 15 patents in various products of our companies. We have been, um, because we, we consider ourselves an um, international or global company, uh, IP protection for ourselves as well as our partners actually is a key part of our company's core value. We, we strongly, strongly, strongly believe in that. And partly it's because of, uh, we have German DNA, we have Japanese DNA in our company. And that's actually a key part of our corporate culture. Um, so we strongly believe in that, and we also believe that we, our product has to be at the industrial standard, as what you mentioned, uh, CE, UL, ASME, and so forth. And whatever the markets require those kind of standards, we do it. Okay, are, are there any questions at this time? So maybe just uh, some, some final uh, questions. Uh, so this is your first time at Hanover Fair, yeah? Yeah, our company, yes, this is the first time.
So how, how are you enjoying it? Oh, it's fun. I mean, I'm meeting with a lot of uh, colleagues here. Uh, it's, it's been great fun. And actually, some of them are my, some of them are people that are used to work with. Uh, it's, actually, it's like not a home. <laughs> Uh, how come you chose this venue in particular if, if your main first markets are, are in Asia? Well, uh, actually interesting you ask. Uh, this is the second place where we chose to release our product. I mean, our product is ready for demonstration. The first place we chose was uh, the, the FC Expo in Tokyo. And from what we believe, there are two main events in the fuel cell business. One is the FC Expo in Tokyo, and then the other one is here. And uh, our company has a, a branch in Germany as well. Yeah, uh, and I mean, there's a lot of German DNA and cultural elements in our company. So uh, if we don't come to Germany, we don't know where else we would go. <laughs> well, I'm glad you chose us, and we hope, hope you come again next year. Sure. Okay, well, if, if you have any questions for Kauri Heat Treatment, they're at booth D60, which is just down that way. Uh, please join me in thanking uh, our wonderful guest here at Kauri Heat Treatment. Thank you very much, Christy. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please do stick around. We have another presentation coming up. It's on estate and perspectives of PEM electrolysis with Pascal Pwinski, uh, sales manager of CETH2.